Um, I guess we'll start. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome. The First Paris Church in Billerica, a Unitarian Universalist welcoming congregation. Whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you're welcome here this morning. And we invite you to stay after the service and chat. And I believe we will have a bit of coffee uh, downstairs because we're opening up more. Uh, COVID is relenting. So uh, we do have singing now in the um, a sanctuary, but we uh, suggest that folks wear masks if they if they sing. My name is Brita. I'll be the worship assistant for today's service. And our worship leader this morning is Reverend Linda Goodman um, and her partner, Joe uh, Pollock. She has been a worship leader or guest minister in UU churches for over 20 years. And uh, she and Joe um, uh, are wonderful musicians. Uh, they recorded, uh, you know, um, much uh, spiritual music of different traditions, and they serve as the minister and music minister of the Tree of Life Interfaith Temple in Milford, New Hampshire. Are there any announcements? Hi, this is Sarah. Just a quick notice for those folks in Zoom, we are recording today's service. If I have to mute you, um, please don't take it personally, but I will be doing that even-handedly and fair to everyone. Thank you. Hi everyone, Lisa O'Connor. I just, it was in the banner, but I wanted to make sure everyone knew about a documentary that St. Anne's has invited everybody to come see this Friday coming up, May 6th at 7 p.m. at St. Anne's a Treble Cove. It's a documentary about our local history. It's Contradictory Place, Cotton Mills alongside anti-slavery efforts in Lowell. Um, and then a discussion with a UMass Lowell professor, Robert Corrent, will follow the 40 minute film. I think this is a fascinating um, documentary. I am gonna try to go, I'm traveling back from a work trip that day, so hopefully I can still make it. But I encourage everyone, it's, it looks like a great little program. Is that in person or on? In person, person. no, it's in person at Sands. Thank you. That sounds really interesting. Any other announcements? Okay. I'd like to begin our service then by acknowledging that First Parish Church was built on the unceded land of the Pawtucket and Massachusetts people. We acknowledge the connection that they have continued to maintain with the land here in this place we call Bill Ricca. And we recognize the hardships they have endured and commit ourselves to caring for the land, fostering good relationships with our indigenous neighbors. Here are, oh, we're gonna light the chalice. Life is a gift for which we are grateful. We gather together in community to celebrate the glories and the mysteries of this great gift. Let's begin by turning our attention first to the east. The source of the light, the light of dawn, of new beginnings, empower us now. Now we turn our attentions to the south. The source of fire, the fire of home hearths, the fire of compassion, the fire of passion, empower us. 
Now we turn our attention to the West, the source of the waters, the waters of rain and storm, the waters of birth, the waters of emotion and flow, empower us. And we turn our attention now to the North, the place of earth and rocks and crystals, enfolding earth, supporting earth, nurturing earth, empower us. Now please join me in singing hymn number 389, gathered here in the mystery. Gather here in the mystery of the art. Gather here in one strong body. Gather here in the mystery of the art. Gather here in one strong body. Gather here in the mystery of the art. Gather here in one strong body. Gather here in the mystery of the art. Gather here in one strong body. was great. I didn't know the choir had recorded that so beautifully. <laughs> Let's continue with our affirmation of faith. Love is the doctrine of this church. The quest of truth is its sacrament and service is its prayer. To dwell together in peace, to seek knowledge and freedom, to serve humanity and fellowship to the end that all souls shall grow into harmony with the divine. Thus do we covenant with each other and with God. And pay special attention to where the in-breath surrenders to the exhale. And notice again that still point where the exhale to the inhale. Let us breathe out and release the stresses of getting here this morning and breathe in the peace of this place. Breathe out all those to-do lists for now and breathe in the fresh spring air. Breathe out any lingering stale energy of winter. Breathe in the seeds of new dreams. out the clutter of old ideas that no longer serve. Breathe in new hopes, new goals, new plans. Breathe out obstacles. Breathe out excuses. Breathe in new possibilities, freshness. Breathe out fear. Breathe in renewal. Trust the seeds we're planting together. May it be so.
Now we'll enjoy a musical interlude. Let it be a dance we do with you. May I have this dance with you? Dancing song be heard. Play the music, say the words, and fill the sky with singing birds. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance. Learn to follow. Learn to lead. Feel the rhythm, feel the need To reap the harvest, plant the seed Let it be a dance Let it be a dance we do May I have this dance with you Through the good times and the bad times too let it be a dance Everybody turn and spin Let your body learn to bend And like a willow with the wind Let it be a dance Let, Let it be a dance. dance Let it be a dance Time for joy, a time to cry. Take it as it passes by. Let it be a dance. Let it be a dance we do. May I have this dance with you through the good times and the bad times too. Let it be a dance Morning star comes out at night Without the dark there is no light If nothing's wrong then nothing's right Let it be a dance Let it be a dance Let it be a dance The sunshine, let it rain. Share the laughter, bear the pain. And round and round we go again. Let it be a dance. It's hard to sit still during that. <laughs> nice to done. <laughs> Let's read together the charge of the star goddess number 517 in the gray hymnal. In our hymnal, this is attributed to Starhawk, but it's actually an adaptation of a longer charge written by the British witch Doreen Valiente. <laughs> she writes, hear the words of the star goddess, the dust of whose feet are the hosts of heaven whose body encircles the universe. So I will read the parts in regular font and I ask you to respond in the italics. I, who am the beauty of the green earth and the white moon among the stars and the mysteries of the waters. For I am the soul of nature that gives life to the universe. Let my worship be in the heart that rejoices. For behold, all acts of love and pleasure are my rituals. And 
And you who seek to know me, know that your seeking and yearning will avail you not unless you know the mystery. For behold, I have been with you from the beginning. The singer-songwriter Shauna Carroll has composed a, a chant which was inspired by this particular charge. And um, I was honored to be on her recording uh, on the album Goddess Chant, where we sang this among many other wonderful goddess tunes. Joe and I would like to give you a snippet of it now. of love and pleasure are my rituals. I am the goddess, I am the mother. All acts of love and pleasure are my rituals, sacred pleasures, pleasures sacred, sacred pleasure, pleasures I am the goddess, I am the mother. All acts of love and pleasure are my ritual. I am the goddess, I am the mother. All acts of love and pleasure are my ritual. Sacred pleasure, pleasure sacred. I am the goddess, I am the mother. All acts of love and pleasure are my rituals. I am the goddess, I am the mother. All acts of love and pleasure are my rituals. Sacred pleasure, pleasure sacred. Sacred I am the goddess. And so the wheel of the year has turned once again to belting. No winter lasts forever. No spring can be restrained. Beltane is the celebration of the sacred marriage of earth and sun and the birth of the abundant fruits of their union. Beltane is about spring and sex. It's about fertility and sex. It's about birds and bees and flowers and sex. At no other time of the year are the colors so inviting, the smells so seductively sweet. Buds burst with promise of new delights to come and the sound of birds mating calls fill the air. The sap is rising. And this, as the song from Camelot goes, it is the lusty month of May. 
the lovely time when everyone goes blissfully astray. It's about sex. I think my friend who helped me with the decorations for a maypole at a previous Beltane service was a tiny bit amazed that I was planning to talk about sex from the pulpit of a church. They didn't do that in the church she grew up in, unless it was to condemn it as sin. Perhaps this notion goes all the way back to the fourth century when St. Augustine, now he was a guy who admitted that he had a major personal problem with sex addictions. He felt so out of control that he became celibate, viewing sex as shameful and impossible to control, almost like an illness to be cured. Hey, speak for yourself, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> He taught that original sin was passed on through sex, so the pleasures of sex should be avoided as much as possible. It's okay to have sex within marriage, just don't enjoy it too much. Well, I have a question for you, St. Augustine. If God created everything and proclaimed it was good, why did he create the pleasures of the flesh if pleasures of the flesh are to be avoided? It seems to me that this whole sex is a bad, bad idea would have been a tough sell, but sadly it did sell. And this attitude persists even into this age. Christian sociologist author Tom Campolo once quipped, we were taught that sex is a dirty, filthy thing so you should save it for the person you marry. <laughs> when Joe and I were members of the Wilton Unitarian Church, they were planning to purchase a small pipe organ. And we were asked to visit a church in the area that had one like the one we were purchasing so that we could report on the quality of its sound. We were welcomed warmly by its very friendly congregants and we joyed singing the hymns, passing the faith and other elements of the service. And the organ we had come to hear seemed just right for the church of our size. And then there was a baby blessing. Oh, how sweet. Doesn't it make you feel just warm and gooey inside to witness a family and a congregation promise to provide support and nurturing to a new life? The proud parents came to the front with their precious little one, and the minister asked them, do you acknowledge that this child was conceived in sin? And they answered, we do. And Joe and I closed our eyes and squeezed each other's hands and prayed silently that the service would end soon so that we could make a break for it. <laughs> this is true. John Beckett a writer who's a Unitarian Universalist and a Druid says it's good to reclaim sacred sexuality from the Neo-Puritans who preach abstinence and shame. It's good to reclaim sacred sexuality from the evil sorcerers of marketing who use sex to persuade us to buy stuff we neither want nor need. It's good to reclaim sacred sexuality. If we're not meant to enjoy the senses of the flesh, why do flowers need to smell so sweet? Why do spring breezes tingle our spines? Why do colorful flowers delight the eye? Why do we feel called to dig in the dirt until we're muddy and sweaty? or make love until we're messy and sweaty. If we were meant to be celibate, why were we given the pleasure of sex? If we were meant to devote our entire soul to contemplation, praise, and prayer, why do we need flesh at all? Pure spirit could do just as well. 
if we are a part of an interdependent web of existence at a time when it seems like all existence is bursting with life and sensual stimulation, why wouldn't we immerse ourselves gratefully in that vital, refreshing energy? In the words of the witch Peg Aloy, if we believe we're a part of an interdependent web of existence, then let us be mindful that our erotic selves are an integral part of our whole selves. And as such, one with a vital spiritual component. Let us not only infuse our respective sexualities with spiritual values and practice, but in return, enliven our spirituality with a celebration of the sensuous and erotic, recognizing and affirming, as the late John O'Donohue noted, the secret relationship between our physical being and the rhythm of our soul, that the body is the place where the soul shows itself. It's impossible to think about May Day or Beltane without thinking about the Maypole. This deeply symbolic of the marriage between the divine masculine and divine feminine. From the careful preparations through the dance and post dance festivities. The men prepare the Maypole. They find a strong, straight tree and remove all but the top branches. They may chant as they work, something like hoof and horn. Hoof and horn, hoof and horn, all that I shall be reborn. Hoof and horn, hoof and horn, all that I shall be reborn. The women carefully prepare a hole in the earth into which, which to bury the pole. They prepare a circlet of flowers to be lowered over the top of the pole with ribbons dangling from it. And they may chant as they work something like, We all come from the goddess and to her we shall return like a drop of rain flowing to the ocean the men join the women carrying the pole and planting it in the hole that has been prepared by the women as they make it firm the men and women join their chants together we all come from the goddess and to her we shall return like a drop of rain flowing to the ocean and so the dance begins with dancers holding a ribbon end and weaving in and out around the pole and around each other, creating a crisscross pattern of ribbon enfolding the pole. The dancing feet awaken the creative energies of the earth as they dance around the pole. I don't have to explain the symbology of any of that, right? <laughs> To the ancient Celts, sexuality and fertility were not bound in guilt and sin, but in a joyful and less restrained expression of human passions. Young men and women wandered off from Beltane fires to perform their own fertility rites. They returned with leaves and twigs in their hair, happily rumpled from their May Day encounters. These ancients believed in sympathetic magic so coupling in the woods or the fields encouraged fertility for the crops and the animals. These journeys were not just acceptable, 
but an enjoyable type of community service. <laughs> they often created unofficial or Greenwood marriages that lasted a year and a day. If there was a child of the union, that child was considered especially blessed by the gods and goddesses. And if no child came of the union, the partners were free to move on if they so choose with no social stigma. But Beltane is not just about sex. The charge of the star goddess that we read is let my worship be in the heart that rejoices for behold, all acts of love and pleasure are my ritual. And let no one else define what an act of love and pleasure is for you. However you experience ecstasy can be a ritual celebration of the divine. It might be hiking with the family, quietly reading by a river, might be painting or singing or drumming, dancing, or whatever that the creative expression of your choice may be. Meditation or music might bring you to ecstasy. Your worship might bring you to ecstasy. Your ecstasy might be your worship. Belting is a time for turning over the soil of the past and planting our hopes and dreams, as well as our flowers and vegetables. Do you have a piece of your life unfinished? Are there family or health issues that need your attention? Does your spiritual practice need a new energy? The wheel has come around again. And it's an opportunity to start anew. With each step on the spring ground, may we encourage growth in the earth and in ourselves. May the energy of dancing feet help the earth to fully awaken to new and fruitful possibilities. And may the ribbons we weave around the pole connect us in community. May we celebrate the marriage of earth and sun, the marriage of sacredness and fun. May it be so. That was just beautiful. Thank you. That was lovely. <laughs> Our Unitarian Universalist churches are self-supporting. Your gifts of time, faith, love, and of money is what sustains the work of the church. Um, of course, you can also go online to donate, and we'd appreciate that very much at uubilrica.org. Uh, the morning's offering will now be taken and gratefully accepted. From all that dwell below the skies, let songs of love and faith arise. Let peace, goodwill on earth be sung through every land by every tongue.
we extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we are together again. Now please join me in singing, Make Channels for the Streams of Love. the north, which I believe is this way. <laughs> we creatures of Earth who are a part of its interconnected web of life face the north from where we first perceive our grounded mystery and offer our praise and gratitude. Facing the west, We creatures of Earth who are part of its interconnected web of life face the West from where we first perceive the flowing, cleansing nature of her waters and offer praise and gratitude. Face the South. We creatures of Earth who are part of its interconnected web of life face the South from where we first perceive the warming, passionate nature of her fire, and we offer our praise and gratitude. And facing the east, we creatures of earth who are part of its interconnected web of life face the east from where we first perceive the awakening, illuminating nature of the light, and we offer our praise and gratitude. So may it be. Uh -huh. 